Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Cursor 2.0, which was announced three days ago. And the Cursor team announced a new AI model called Composer, which is actually pretty fast, and you're going to see it in action in this video. Another highlight is that now you can run multiple agents at the same time. Using the same prompt, you can basically run it three times, but with different models. And then at the end, compare the results and just keep the one you, you want. So in this video, I'm going to give you my mobile perspective of development because I've seen some creators make some content about Cursor 2.0 and everyone is focusing on web. In today's video, we're going to be using one of my applications, mobile app built with React Native. Before we start, if you want to support the channel and level up your React Native skills, check out my course at codeviveto.dev. I'm going to leave the link in the description. I built this React Native course based on my years of experience building React Native applications and specifically structure it in a way that is going to help you level up your skills as you take the lessons starting from the very basics all the way to publishing your application making automation using services like Expo application services and following best practices. We also have some premium resources, examples, courses on React, Git. Make sure to check it out. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Now let's dive in. All right, so here's the announcement. Three days ago, Cursor team released this video. Let's take a quick look. Basically, they are introducing this new composer model, which is going to be super smart and fast. And now you have this new agents tab on the top left where you can spin up the same, I mean, run the same task in multiple models. You can select up to four models at the same time. And this is pretty, pretty actually pretty cool because I've never seen this before. This is the first time that you can actually kick off these three jobs in this case from one single instance of a window. So pretty cool. Then you can review the changes and apply them. They also added a built-in browser, but I think everyone is talking about it. So we are not going to cover that in this video. Okay, so let's see this in action. I have here my uh, AI tattoo application that I've been working on. It's basically an, a nano banana wrapper from Google. It allows you to make pretty cool tattoos. And I actually submitted this application to um, the App Store and was rejected by Apple. The reason, the reason for that is because in my payments wall, let me show you. So if I go to change my plan, this is actually a new UI that I came up with yesterday, playing around with the models. By the way, I completely back coded the UI functionality. I did it manually, <laughs> but this is one of the use cases that I think using an AI model is great. Honestly, I'm not very good at UI. I don't want to waste too much time on this. I already, the functionality already works. And they actually rejected this app because I was missing the terms and privacy policy. At least that's what I think. Hopefully they won't reject it again. It's in review at the moment. But just to showcase how you can use Cursor 2.0 in this real life use case, let's try to revamp this UI to make it more compelling because at the moment, you know, this is a bit boring. So what I want to do is just revamp this UI, make it more compelling, make it make it nicer. And this is, I think, a great way to test the new agents tab on Cursor 2.0. So let's go ahead and select this one. Here you can see a list of recent tasks that I created with the agents. Yesterday, like I said, I was improving the paywall UI. Here you can see it. And you can also see that I run it on three models. Another great advantage of Cursor 2.0 is that you can now connect to the browser, add images, so add context by just adding the ad and then mentioning the file. Like in this case, we can say paywall. Just like that, now we have this context. You could do that before, but you know now this is going to run for three agents. By the way, this is a bit tricky. You need to put the, your mouse in the input and then you'll see this um, cycle agent count. Then you can click on it and then you can select four or even click on use multiple models and check basically all of them. So this is huge. Of course, you know, maybe it's going to actually take you more time to review every single generation if you select all of them. But I would say everyone is going to be selecting just the most popular ones, which is Composer, the new one from Cursor 2.0. They actually created this in-house. It's supposed to be super fast and it's an agentic coding model. Then we have the best of the best, in my opinion, which I think it's Sonnet 4.5 and then GPT-5 Codex, which in my opinion, I think it's also great. You can select the number of instances because right now we are going to run this prompt on three models, but you could actually run it on the same model four times. Uh, but so let's try to limit ourselves just to three 
instances. Once you have selected your models, you can just come here and prompt it. Now, before I enter my prompt, let's add some images as examples. So I went to ChatGPT Atlas, which is a new browser from OpenAI. In case you didn't know, you can now check it out. And I searched for some images of paywalls. I kind of like this one. So I'm just going to take a screenshot of this phone, come back and paste it in here. Now, here we have the image. I kind of like this one as well. I think it's like following best practices. So let's take a screenshot as well and paste it in here. Okay, so I have two. Hopefully this won't confuse the agents. Now, on top of that, I want to add an asset to this screen. So if we go to the editor, I actually have this AI tattoo home PNG image that I think looks really cool. Maybe we can use it for this screen, AI tattoo home. That's actually pretty cool. So if you are already on the file and then you just say add, it's going to put it as a first result. Pretty cool UX. Now time for a prompt. Let me get ready for that. I'm actually pretty bad at writing prompts. So let's ask ChatGPT to generate a prompt for me. I'm going to bring here ChatGPT desktop and I'm going to start talking my prompt. Help me generate a prompt for a coding agent. The goal is to revamp the paywall UI. We don't want to change the uh, core functionality or business logic is just a UI revamp. I think we can improve the UI right now. We have three packages, Starter, Plus, and Pro. Starter offers 125 um, tattoo generations, Plus offers 300 tattoo generations, and Pro offers 1,000. So I, I'm going to add a couple of examples of good UIs that I found on the internet. And then I also want to use an asset from my uh, from my images, which is a tattoo image that I think we can put as maybe as a background for the UI. So help me craft a prompt that will help the AI agent um, revamp this UI in a way that is compelling, taking inspiration from the screenshots that I'm going to share, although I don't want that exact screenshots interface. I just want to take that as an example to improve it. And of course, use the image that I mentioned. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to send this. This will improve my prompt. Okay, so I have my prompt. I'm going to put it in here. This is how it looks. Just the goal is to revamp this file. We have the three plans. The goal is to improve the visual layout, hierarchy, and appeal of the paywall screen. Okay, then we're also mentioning that the assets are from inspiration but we want to actually use the image of the tattoos. So in here we can say AI tattoo image assets. Very important is that, you know, I don't want the model to change the functionality. So we are reiterating that and then some deliverables. Okay, so now at this point we're ready. I'm just going to submit this and this will start revamping my UI with three models at the same time. So you can see here Sonnet 4.5, GPT-5 with Codex and Composer. Now, Composer is a new one, and this one is supposed to be super fast. They are arguing that you actually can get results in less than 30 seconds, which is mind-blowing. If you want to test out something quick, you can you know, always use Composer. GPT-5 Codex is actually the slowest one, um, but you know, sometimes it generates pretty cool results. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you don't really know when you are using AI, especially for full refactors like this one. Okay, Composer is done. That was fairly quick because, you know, considering that Sonnet is still working and generating stuff and GPT-5 still planning, <laughs> so he's not doing anything yet. Composer generated less code, only 300 new lines. Deleted 141 versus Sonnets, almost 500 lines, minus 222. Now, Sonnet is actually doing, you know, writing a bunch of information of what it did. And I think that's maybe why it's fast, uh, slower. Anyways, the way you can try this is by actually creating a pull request or just press the review button here. This is going to open this tab here. And then in here you can check the changes that it did. It added linear gradient. Interesting. It also added a blur view. Anyways, let's just see this in action. I'm going to apply all 
it's okay if you apply all the changes because you can always undo that. So if you take a look at the UI, it's, you know, it's might be better. I like the title. It's now kind of like centered. It changed the header, something that I really like. Change plan. This is still a full screen um, modal, but now we have the, the fade at the very top of the screen. I kind of like it. This is the one I have, best value. But if you take a look at the best value, it's actually covering the price, which is pretty bad. Although I think we can fix that. Um, cool. So now I'm going to just come here and, start and say undo changes. This is going to take me back to my previous state. Uh, we can close this window and this one. And now let's check out Sonnet 4.5. Let's Let's press review. Okay, pretty interesting. It also added a linear gradient. One thing that I noticed, by the way, is that it didn't use the image that I wanted to use, um, Composer. So let's apply these changes. So I'm not able to apply the changes from Sonnet 4.5 because it created a readme that does not exist. It's not, there's no way to apply that because the file does not exist. So I don't know how to fix that. So I'm just gonna ask it to remove it. So this is now a new prompt. Um, and let's see if this works. Okay, so I asked the agent to remove the file. And now if I apply the changes, uh, the app breaks. So Composer is winning so far. Let's undo apply here. I'm going to give it another prompt to see if it can fix the, to see if it can fix the issue. Uh, but so far, you know, this is not working very well with Sonnet. Okay, and GPT-5, let me undo these changes. GPT-5 codex is now done. It took a lot, of, a long time, like more than five minutes, I would say. Let's apply all. Okay, 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 I like it. It's actually pretty good. But there's no way to see which one is my current plan. Not bad, let's undo. Go back to Sonnet. Let's see if it fixed the issue. Okay, cool. Now we have the UI. Let's see. It added this thing, this value. We have the number of generations, big number. I kind of like it. Honestly, I think this is my favorite so far. I can barely see the image on the background. I think this is my favorite. Although it took like three prompts, so I don't know if that's fair for other models. Definitely took took a while if you compare it to Composer. Um, let me undo. Let's check again Composer. Something that I really like about Composer is the header. It updated it, looks better. Let's apply this. GPT-5 did a decent job, I would, I would say, but very repetitive. Not very useful in my opinion, um, but you know, at the end of the day, it looks okay. And then finally we have Sonnet 4.5, which, you know, it needs some tweaks. The header is not as good as the other one, so I need to update that manually. Although it's using the background blur, but that's a, a bit old and doesn't look really good on iOS 26. But overall, I like how it presented the information, price, Number of generations, that's basically all you care about when you are subscribing to the app. So I think I'm going to declare this Sonnet 4.5 as the winner, although it took longer. Composer is very fast, so I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. GPT-5 definitely took a lot of time, but the result was decent as well. But I don't know if it's worth it because at the end of the day, I didn't choose that. So Sonnet 4.5, definitely, I think it's the best model at the moment. It made a couple of mistakes, but you know, they're fixable. It's the most useful <laughs> at the end of the day. So from there, you can, of course, just apply the changes, push them to main or create a pull request if you want to. But that's basically all I wanted to show you for this video, guys. Uh, the way you can now run multiple agents to do the same task and then compare the results is very cool. So let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. 
you know, at the end of the day, the three of them require me to go and make some manual updates, but definitely something to explore allows me to move quicker. It's way better than the original UI that I had. Uh, I think, in my opinion, the Sonnet 4.5 result it's better than the one that i had but anyways i hope you like this quick video i hope you learned something new let me know in the comments what you think about the new cursor 2.0 version which ui is your favorite don't forget to subscribe check out code dev and master react native alongside me i'll see you in the next one